Okay, now if you look at all that have been explaining about the stream module in Node.js, you will now realize that it's a very important topic. <clears throat> and I've already told you that what streams are. And I want to give you two uh, very important, important why stream is very, very helpful. Now, when you use the stream module, it provides you with these two major advantage, which number one of them is memory efficiency. When people are using your software, you don't really know the amount of RAM and the disk they have. And it becomes very helpful for you to build an application that will be able to work efficiently. Imagine you have a one gig RAM phone and you are visiting a site to watch a video that is one, 1 1.5 gig MB. At 1.5 gig. Now, if you don't do stream and then in the site and the whole of that is downloaded, it needs to be downloaded. It might result to uh, it, the app is not memory efficient. It might result to the person's device hanging because there is no enough space in the memory to put the file at once. In that case, it becomes a problem. Your app is not memory efficient. It's needing, it now needs more memory for your app to work, whether it's a site or a mobile app. But when you use streaming, you use the stream mode, you'll be able to build a memory efficient app such that though the file is one gig, 1.5 gig, you can just be sending the person one MB at a time. So imagine when the app is just requesting for one MB and the person have one gig RAM, it will look as if he is not even, um, the device is not even, a, your app is not needing memory at all because it's just requesting for the two data. And before he's done exhausting the one MB in terms of playing the video, another one MB is sent just little by little like that. And that is one, how the stream module help us to build a memory efficient application. Then the other one is time efficiency. How does it provide us with time efficiency? In the sense that before the 1 MB, 1.5 gig video will be fully available to play if you're downloading everything at once. It all has to be downloaded. It becomes a challenge. At least even if not all of them, a whole bunch of it, because the app is actually downloading everything at once. So before you'll be able to access the resource, the video itself, you now uh, the time will be longer. Imagine the time it will take to download 1.5 gig and the time it will take to download one MB, it, the difference will be very clear. Just when your app is loaded, the one MB file is ready to play, the one MB, the, the one that you stream is ready to play. And why the other one, you need a lot of time to equally do that. Also, when you are also uploading the file to the server, the one that uses stream will be more memory efficient and also be more time efficient in the sense that you just pick the file one by one and send it to the server little by little, such that there is no a, a kind of pressure on the server, no large file to be processed at once. Also on the part of the basic device, it's all going to be more memory and time efficient. Yeah, Chinedu, you have a question? Yes, sir. Sir, um, is, um, actually, is this um, stream, is it what makes, let me say, if somebody's watching video on YouTube, if he offs his data, but the video will play small before it will be hung. Is it because of um, YouTube is built or with um, streaming? Yeah, YouTube, Netflix, all those platforms, they always, they are utilizing streaming. They don't play, they will download the entire video. That is why they always call them the streaming sites. They utilize the streaming. If it is built with Node.js, it is actually the streaming module, the stream module that, is at work you know when that is if you go to netflix or a particular uh, youtube you just discover that a movie that is one hour 30 minutes you're watching just within this few seconds that you are decide the thing is loaded you are watching it but if you now uh, if you forward the video to the middle it will take you time before it will be able to play the reason is because the content at that location where you forwarded it to is not available in your system yet. What the app will do is to go and fetch that particular location from the back end for you. 
and bring it for the front before it can play. And after that, it keeps fetching from there. So you find out that it's very memory efficient and also time efficient. Instead of waiting for the entire 1.5 gig to be available before you start watching the video, it's bringing you something like 1 MB or even less at a time, such that in every 5 or 10 seconds, something new is being is bring brought to you and added to the front. Except when you don't have a network challenge, that is when you can even notice that this thing is not fully downloaded. That is why you now see this in a road in telling you that hey, we are busy, we are trying to fetch the next batch of data for this video for you. I hope you, you understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the whole of Node.js itself is surrounded with the, uh, the stream module at work. You remember when we built our app where we created the site and then we sent data to the uh, browser? You remember that? <clears throat> Now, such scenario is utilizing the stream uh, behind the scene. I told you that we have two type, uh, two type of a basic uh, stream, the readable and the writable stream, but we actually have four, the duplex and the transform. Now, in that scenario where you are sending data to the front, to the front end person, uh, to the browser using the re response, which we did uh, in our previous class let me share my screen you are actually using the writable stream the writable stream is a stream where you can write data to a stream so now you can see my screen let me open uh let me open the studio in a mentorship yeah this is mentorship okay i can open the studio from here so you see that it's actually a, a, a type of stream that we are doing. That is why we didn't send all the data at once. Let's see our file again. Let me look at, I think, index.js here and show you the, OK, I guess here yeah, we have something like that. Now look at this. I told you that this is going to send the data in between to the and, and when we run this site, this uh, app that day, you saw all these things on the browser. Now, the writable stream have the behavior, a group of uh, functions that help you to add data to the stream. Now, we are adding this first data address. We are also, after that, we add the next one. You see that we are adding data to the stream one after the other. That is also how this data will be made available to the rest of the front and one after the other. This is an example of a st of stream module in action, but this is not created directly from by importing the stream module. Instead, it is uh, built into this response object that you get when you create a server. The way we create a server here, you have a request and a response. This request is a readable stream. You read the content of this stream. You can read everything there. Why this one is a writable stream. You can add data to this particular stream. So this is how Node.js backend related activities happen. It all revolves around this stream mechanism. <clears throat> Streaming and events are very important in Node.js application. Now, also, you, we have also used the FS module, which also lets us work with both readable and writable stream. Also, when we begin to your work with an S, with Express, which is a Node.js server that simplifies working with Node.js, some of the things we do by ourselves here, as we are learning Node.js, when we begin using Express, they become easier for us to do. So you already seen that Node.js is very easy to learn. But then when you begin to use Express, you also find that building backend with Node.js is now, it's become more easier. So let's begin with our files today, all uh, stream.js. Okay, so how do you create a stream? First, you can import stream. Let's import stream equals require. You remember everything is, require you can use this stream or you can also use the one with uh, promises it doesn't matter since we use fs promises the other time let's see we use just the normal uh, 
uh, from the stream module directly. Now, how do we create a stream here? To create a readable stream, what we can do now is to say, let's say const uh, readable equals this stream now. stream dot create this uh, dot read able now you look at the name here dot read able now this readable is a class so you look at it a class so it needs to be the new keyword needs to be called in order to instantiate it and make it available as an object you can work on now, in the other example I showed you, where you have the rest, the response in our index file, you could see that in between inside this create server, that is somewhere that they actually did stream dot readable in order to create this response. There is somewhere they did such job in order to create this readable stream. And if we now want to create a writable stream, what we can do is say cons, let's say write a bootstream and then we also say equals new stream dot write writable so you see now we have also created a writable stream now for we to read Make use of this readable stream. We can then say readable stream dot read. Uh, your, um, writable, there's no M in the writable. Writable stream, that writable stream, there's no M. No, you, you don't need to have, okay, okay, in th this particular uh, variable. Uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, in order for me to actually do the reading now, we now need to call the read function. You can see now we now have a read function here which we can use to read. Now we can also add data. We can add data to this by calling the push function. Now when you call push like this, you are adding data to the stream, just like in the rest, uh, in the other place we have right. The right is doing something similar to this. We now have the data we are right, we can then say we are we want to have something like um, first, and we can add another one just like we have right, 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 right in our previous work. We can also push another one, and then we call the data second. Now we have added data to this. Now when we are also to use the write table, we can also call different function in the write table. See, we have a function called write. See that in our write table stream and our response to the other side, we saw this method called write. In our readable stream, we saw you can also see the meta call push and other one which you can use to add data to it. This right now is expecting a data which you will need to pass into this. So you can also add data and say write one. Then we also put another one, writing two. So this is just the basic way of creating and using stream. Now we can also see there are different methods there which you can use to post the reading of or the writing of the stream. There are different methods that can help you. Now let's see, we are going to see how we can assess this particular um, readable stream. Let's create a fun a loop here now. Uh, let's uh, sorry. Let's create a function and I think function call it log. Uh, let's call log chunks. 
a chunk is referring to those individual data, those little, little data you are seeing there. So we put here read able. Okay, we put the readable stream here as the parameter. Now, what do we do here? We can say for await. Have this await assign. First chunk of readable. You remember we have, we've deleted this type of array in our JavaScript class. So we can then log our chunk. So we say chunk. Then we have the chunk. Okay. So we have created a function that is going to do this. Do I have a message somewhere? No problem. Okay. Uh, the, uh is, is someone send message? Okay, Destiny, you have a question? Uh, I'm with, um, yes, sir. Okay. Um, I want to know. I want to know. Uh, are we not? Are we not going to handle the error in the function? Yeah. Of course, uh, yes. uh, I just keep it to make things go direct to the point where what we are doing, but it's not bad. Okay. I put it in case we have an okay. error. Yeah. Oh. So let's uh, call our function. Uh, log chunk. We are going to fetch a file, one of the files we have here, but then let's first add our readable stream here. We are going to then fetch our, let's move to our Node.js folder and I will call Node stream. What do we have? Oh, sorry, saying this right method is not implemented. Let me comment this so that we can test our read. Okay, now you look at, we have seen our chunk, the chunk, the data we have now in form of buffer. Buffer is usually the type of uh, data type where stream data are stored in Node.js. The buffer is usually the, the where it is stored. Now you see that we are be able to, we are accessing the buffer data in our readable stream. Now what we need to do now, we are going to create another readable stream, which is going to come from one of the files. So inside here that we are calling the, we are going to create, let me uh, clean up all this one so that it doesn't conflict. Now let's create a readable stream now. Say, on readable equals fs. I'm going to import fs module now. fs dot. Let's import it first. Just fs. Uh, this is. Um, Okay. The import star as FS from FS. Uh, this is also a way you can do import apart from doing the required. We are importing everything from FS as FS. So now we can say FS dot want to create a readable stream here now. Create readable stream. That is a function there called create readable stream. You know, when we used FS before, we used different methods from there. Let's see, do we have const, um, I've not tried to use this create readable stream, it was require. 
just for a testing i just thinking about it, if there is something like that. Yeah, yeah we have the function so instead of importing everything and do that we can equally just the way we did yesterday by importing the function directly so we can just create readable string i usually like um, getting these functions like this so what we can do now we put our file the file we want to read now, which one should we read? Let's look at files.txt, which the one we copied yesterday. Uh, which of this file? Yeah, open file.txt. And the content is small. Let me look for the one with the bigger content. File copy dot dot. Okay, I think this is okay. So I'm going to rename. I won't actually name. I just want to copy the name in full. Then I come to our FS create readable strip here now. Um, this also have a callback. You know, I didn't import from promises. If you look at put your information here, you will see the detail, but we need a callback, which is also expecting two parameters. Error. Sorry, I think what we need here is the encoding, which we can, let's leave the encoding, it's not necessary. Oh my, this is serious, this is serious. This is serious. Um, so let's put our reader book here. And then we log. Yeah, look at, the, what we are seeing here now is the representation of the data in our, uh, what is it called in our file? So let's go in there now and put our encoding. Let's put encoding now. Put the encoding. See, the, uh, we have to put this now. UTF, UTF eight. Okay. Now let's run the code again. Yeah. Now we are able to access the data directly. The UTF-8 help us to get the data in stream in the stream form, like and not in the buffer. It's done the encoding of the file as is of the readable stream. So now we are able to get the data of this particular stream, which is readable stream, and is reading this particular file. Because of our time, we need to stop here today. I hope that tomorrow I'll be able to have more uh, I should get where tomorrow.